couple of days ago, we sort of reached out to the people in ones to say, do you have any questions for me as leader of this council? Because such a lot has happened since the lockdown started. And I thought we ought to have a conversation between the residents and, and the council. You've heard a lot about what the council's doing, but a bit of a face-to-face -face I thought would be quite good. So thank you very much for those who sent in their questions. And I'll try and do my best to answer them as well as I can. Hello, my name is Mariam Gavorkian and I'm from South West London. My question for the council leader is, what services are being provided for people who were homeless before the virus began? And what measurements are being taken to ensure that these people are safe during this time? Thank you. So we have had a long-standing relationship with SPEAR, which is a charity specialising in this field. The outreach workers from SPEAR get in touch with those sleeping rough all over the borough and make sure that they are well supported whilst they exercise whatever choice they want to make. But we do make sure that they are well looked after, they have medical care, that they have mental health care if that's what's necessary, help with addiction, and above all, make sure that they are looked after and are not going hungry. During this crisis, we have reached out to 63 residents who have been sleeping rough in Wandsworth and rehoused them. I actually think that's a great opportunity for the Spears outreach workers to do some long-term concerted work with the 63 people to make sure that when the crisis is over, that they have a chance not to return back to, to the streets. But this is an important area for, for, of interest to the council and I know many residents. So what I'd say to local residents is that if you see anyone sleeping rough, uh, please alert the council. And the best way of doing it is to go to the uh, web link streetlife.london and they'll take you to Spears page and, and also directly to Wands of Council. Thank you very much. Good morning, it's Michelle from FitSW11. It's a message to Wands of Council. I'd love to know all the things that you're doing to help people in Wandsworth, all our residents, stay fit and well during this difficult time. Um, something that enhances well-being while they're inside. If you could um, let me know, that'd be fantastic. Hi, Michelle from Fitness SW11. Thank you very much for your question, but also thank you very much for all the work you're doing with the community in Battersea and in particular the community on the Doddington Estate. Now, you will know from your work that Batsy Park remains open, as do many of the other ones of parks. They are open to all those who want to use them responsibly to remain fit and active. Now, hand in hand with park use, we have a lot of online facilities. So Enable and the Foundation both have got quite a lot of uh, online fitness classes. Adult services have got, through the Lifelong Learning Programme, we've got some adult classes on there. We have also got Professor Rusi Jaspal, who is our advisor on loneliness, doing some sort of ways in which how people can keep, keep, remain connected and in, in link with the community. And of course, you know, all of this is important to people who are living alone, but actually even more important is friends and neighbours, making sure that their friends and neighbours are well, make a telephone call, knock on the door, check they're okay, and reach out when you can. Hi Ravi, my name's Olivia. I'm one of the residents in Tooting and I'm a nurse at the local hospital. I'm wondering what the council are doing to help some of our more vulnerable residents who might be self-isolating at this time but don't have any friends or family nearby to help them. Olivia, from the beginning of this crisis, the council's key and important priority has been supporting and safeguarding our isolated and vulnerable people. The whole of the government's programme and the council's programme is in, to ensure that people who are in need of support are supported and so they do not in fact become victim to the virus or other ailments and do not put additional pressure on our National Health Service. So that's an important framework within which we've set up the Community Hub. The so Community Hub functions seven days a week and has received an awful number of calls but we've been able to satisfy each one of them with support that they need. So let me get, try and go through some of the things that, that they're doing. Four ones of the residents of the hub has handled 1,667 calls. Majority of these calls were about food. 
Now what happens then is that call is assessed and the person is referred to adult social services who make a further detailed assessment of their needs and then those, are, those needs are met either through council or through HUK ones of branch. Between the two of us, we make sure that the vulnerable resident has all that they need. Now, I received not too long ago a, a commendation for the work of the, uh, of the hub from a local resident who wrote to me, and I'll read it out to you. The community hub was excellent, fast, very simple, took details and explained what they were doing, and then took my details in case there was a need for follow-up. So that's a comprehensive description of what the hub is doing. But hand in hand with hub's activity, adult care social services team and the housing department are going around particularly looking at those people who are vulnerable and living on their own. Make sure they are safe, they are okay. Looking after people requires support of other sort as well. PPE has been in the news a lot, but this council has made sure that we have accessed as much PPE we need for both our care services, our care homes, and our sort of special schools. So in the last weeks, we have distributed over two, two and a half thousand face masks, seven and a half thousand pairs of gloves, 125 bottles of hand sanitizers, and two and a half thousand aprons. And of course, we stand ready to access more supplies when those, these run out. So now I have a question from Magdalena about council tax. She's asking, how can I apply for council tax reduction? Very important issue for particularly for those people who are facing shortage of cash as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. So we have a council tax reduction scheme and 3,600 families in this borough will be eligible for it. So if you're already on the council tax reduction, reduction scheme, you will have 185 pounds credited to your council tax account straight away. You don't need to apply. If you think you're eligible for council tax reduction help, the easiest thing to, to do is to visit the council website and make your application there. The details of the website are here. Now, hand in hand with council tax reduction, I ought to tell you that the council has taken steps to make sure that those who fall behind in their rent payments or their council tax payments will not have their tenancies terminated as a result of that. So we are giving you an assurance that there will be no eviction action taken for non-payment of rents or rates, council tax, at this time. Hello, my name is Jane and I live in Putney. Uh, my question for the council is that during this time of lockdown, I've really enjoyed having the time to sit and read. And I wondered if there was any facility for people to be able to order books online through the libraries and then have them delivered. And I'm also thinking about in terms of parents that are now trying to homeschool or have young children, um, having access to other resources through the library and if that could be delivered to people at home. Jane, thank you very much for raising this very important issue about library service. Particularly for a borough which has got 11 functioning libraries, just shows you what love of learning and reading there is in this borough. Of course, libraries are shut at the moment, but that doesn't mean the library service is not functioning. So we have a lot of material online for particularly directed at children, young children, sort of bedtime stories, rhyme and all of that. Just need to go into the website to, to, to access that. We're also continuing the home delivery service, so particularly aimed at elderly and vulnerable residents. This is a part of our normal library offer, but of course of critical importance now when people are isolated at home. The library service can still provide you audiobooks, um, so you don't have to be elderly vulnerable to, to access home service, but you can go, go to the website and access audiobooks and other books. They will be delivered to your home. But hand in hand with materials the library service is providing, you know, the school service has put a lot of learning for young pe children online. So there is learning online for what people who want to learn at home. The schools also recognise there are households where there is no access to computers. So schools are open for some of those, some of the schools are open for children who want to access computer services. 
We are very fortunate that we have received some funding support from Batsi Power Station, and so particularly data poor households will have vouchers so they can sit at home and access learning at home. So a lot happening. If you want to know more about it, just go to the Council website and you will find all the information there. Hello, Councillor Govinda. My name's James Pritchard. I live in Putney and I would like to ask about recycling bags. There appears to be a big shortage currently, both in Putney and also I get the sense across most of the borough of the bags. The tip is shut so people can't drop recycling off there. Currently, the only way we can get hold of them is by ordering them online and the deliveries don't appear to be turning up or by popping to the town hall and you're telling us that we shouldn't be doing that either because obviously social distancing. So I think a lot of people are building up large supplies of plastic bottles and glass bottles and don't really know what to do with them. Can you arrange for some emergency deliveries of recycling bags? Can you get the bin men to deliver them? Is there anything you can do to get recycling bags out to folk because we'd like to recycle, it's not happening at the moment, um, and I think a lot of stuff is just getting thrown into the normal rubbish as a consequence. So what are we doing about recycling bags? Thanks very much for your time. So James, you raise a very, very important point about waste collection and recycling. So firstly, I'd say that we are so very fortunate in having some exceptional refuse crews who have kept the service going right the way through. So the weekly collection remains, and, and I think that people are very, very pleased that that service has not been abandoned. What is important, of course, at the same time, is recycling. Many people staying at home are generating an awful lot of recyclable materials, and so we shouldn't miss the opportunity to collect that. Recycling bags are a problem, I know that. So we are reviewing how we distribute those bags without impacting negatively on the weekly collection. So hopefully we'll find a way to make sure that recycling bags can be distributed. I'll let you into a little secret. Um, each crew has a small quantity of recycling bags in the truck. So if you next time see a, a, a truck around the corner from you, stop them and ask them. They might be able to help. Hi, just wondering, um, part in the park in Wandsworth, um, obviously there's no people, um, so the water is now full of tadpoles. When I say tadpoles, I mean tens of thousands of them, which will then obviously turn into frogs, which will then be a massive issue for you. Rochelle, you raise an interesting point, isn't it? I, I struggled to find frogs in my garden, and I'm sure many people would say it was awfully lucky to see tadpoles in the spring. I don't think it's a big problem, because every year there are tadpoles, but not all of them make into, into full adult life. So the life cycle will move on, and they will be the natural correction. I think if you're really interested to find out more about frogs, I understand that www.froglife.org will tell you all about that. How can Montrose Council help a cultural organization like Agora Art Circle to support the well-being of its community and encourage people to creatively collaborate? Maria, thank you very much for raising this very important question. Arts are an important part of our community and indeed our economy. And so it's very important that we do what we can to support organisations and indeed artists to come through this pandemic with as little damage as possible. So we've done lots of things, and so I'll go through those one by one. Firstly, we are honouring our promises to organisations and artists. The promises we made were about fees and grants, so we are paying them now and without delay. Recognising full well that they may not be able to produce the work, but of course, producing work doesn't happen overnight. Much thought will have gone into creating the product, and so we think it's right that the grants are paid and that work will, of course, remain there in the mine or there, and we will share it in time. Secondly, we have had to cancel the Ones of Arts Fringe, which is a great regret, and May would have seen a huge number of activities in the borough. But what we've done is we've paid all the money out to artists and organisations. The work we've commissioned has been paid for. But it's also given those who want to take up this opportunity an opportunity to put that work on digitally. So it can be streamed into your home directly. So hopefully many organisations will take advantage of that and, and their creative talents will, have been, will be shared by people of this borough. 
Added to that, the Nine Elms team is continuing to commission works which don't require people to breach the social distancing guidelines, so that's an important part of commissioning that we are continuing to do. We have set up a web page for organisations and artists so that they have information about all sorts of financial support that is available through central government, local governments, Arts Council UK, trusts and foundations. It's again very important that people are resourced not only now but in the future so that they can continue to contribute to the artistic uh, uh, endeavours of this borough. And finally, we continue to, to, to publicise whatever artistic and cultural activities are still continuing in the borough. And of course, there are virtual platforms for arts, artists, organisations and others to take part and continue to remain in link with each other. Hopefully, with all this help, our vibrant art scene will remain vibrant and come through minimally scathed after this crisis. Hi there. This is something I've emailed about before. I have noticed the streets around Southfield's Tube Station and Sainsbury's Wandsworth are very dirty. There's loads of chewing gum and cigarette butts and just general dirt all around the streets on the footpaths and the railings and the walls. I wondered if you would consider during this time of little activity on our streets to do some deep cleaning. Uh, it could be done solo with social distancing in mind and it might just be the fresh start that we need once we come out of this terrible end pandemic. Thank you. Hi, Carly. I know how proud the Southfields community is of its village atmosphere. And quite rightly that at this time you might all sort of say, this might be an opportunity to do a spring clean for the village. Well, let me, let me go through a couple of things that, that are important to both Southfields and, and, and ones of as a whole. You'll have noticed that we are maintaining the weekly rubbish collection, which is very important to people in this borough and we are also maintaining all the scheduled street sweeping. So that's business as usual. Now, before the crisis, we had started reviewing where we could have done a spring clean along the lines that you suggest. Where could we have done street sweeping and street washing? Unfortunately, we've had to abandon those plans because of social distancing issues and shortage of staff to carry out that work. So once this is over, we're going to go back to that review and see whether we can resume that work, but always making sure that we comply with the social distancing guidelines then in force. So hopefully we will actually get to where you want us to get to, but not just as yet. We now have quite a lot of questions about businesses and what is the council doing to support the business community in the borough. My name is Steve Pinto, CEO of Wandsworth Chamber of Commerce. I have a question for uh, Wandsworth Council, our leader. Wandsworth is made up of many, many small businesses and a great many of those are self-employed people and sole traders. At present, the government is providing very little support for these businesses. What is Wandsworth Council doing to lobby the government on this issue? Thank you. Steve, before I come to your question, can I just say thank you very much for partnering with Wandsworth Council to support our outreach to the business community. Your webinars are very, very well subscribed and an important part of our contribution to advising the, the local business community. But for the 35,000 self-employed people, there is a government scheme, but in order to access it, they need to have up-to-date annual accounts. Some of them have obviously not been able to do them in time. Now, we have partnered with three local accountancy firms to make sure that those who need the help and advice to complete those accounts and submit them in time to access government grants have got that. In fact, that it's at no cost to the self-employed person. We will bear that cost because you are such an important part of our community. But I know that whilst the government scheme for self-employed people is generous, it does not cover everyone. So we are lobbying the government to make three distinct improvements to the schemes. Firstly, we think that the upper limit of 50,000 should be removed. At the moment, it becomes a cliff fall if you exceed 50,000. You get nothing. We think instead what it should be is the first 50,000 should be eligible for funding and thereafter no more. But that is one change that would help a lot of people. 
Secondly, we think that there should be a flat rate lower limit for lower earned, earning self-employed. This would be kind of equivalent to the, the threshold below which no income tax is paid. And finally, there are many self-employed businesses which where, where managers pay themselves through a dividend and they are not at the moment covered and I think that is an unfair uh, restriction and that is another change that we are lobbying the government to make. Another question was I had from a local resident is when will we get our grant? So she'd made an application and has not received uh, the grant. Officers have been in touch with her and I know that she's been reassured that her grant is on its way and she should soon have it. So many of you will know the government's been quite, quite generous with the business support schemes that they've put out there. We end up being the administrators of the scheme and our watchword is that we should administer those as efficiently as possible with as minimum bureaucracy as possible so that the money is processed and in your bank accounts as soon as you need it. Because you're already struggled with, struggling with cash flow problems, I don't think we should need, have to add to it. So as soon as the schemes were announced, we wrote to 4,000 of our local businesses, making them aware of the scheme and how we would process it. To date, we have delivered £30 million of the government grants to 80% of our eligible businesses. Hopefully, it has reached you in time to address all your cash flow crisis issues. Of course, every government scheme has shortcomings, and this too has it. So, for example, it doesn't cover businesses that pay their service charges and rents and all in one. Now, we have lobbied the government to address this particular problem. And we continue to listen to the business community for how else we can improve both our services and how we can lobby the government to improve its offer. So there are regular advice sessions, uh, certainly I referred earlier to the partnership with Wanza Chamber of Commerce, and that too has been very, very important and useful in informing our business sector in how to access government support. Okay, we now come to the end of this question and answer session. So firstly, thank you very much for watching, but also thank you very much for all those who people who ask questions. We are now into a further extension of lockdown. So can I say, please continue to observe the social distancing guidelines and for all information, continue to look at Wands of Council's website. There is regular information updates on there and we'll continue to provide that right the way through this lockdown.